Okay, sixth grader. So earlier today, um, I asked you to begin start um, thinking of designs for your orphism lesson. And I was showing everybody how to use this compass. So if you're at home, you don't have one of these, that's okay. Like I said, you can use circular things from around home. Um, cups, you know, things like this. This could be used as a good circle. Um, toilet paper holder uh, rolls. Uh, anything that really you can find. Um, just looking around, like see, I could use this for circles. I could use, I use yogurt cups a lot. You can use any kind of things like this for your circles. You can make many different kinds of circles just with things that you find around the house. So if you don't have a compass, it's not a big deal. Um, if at school here, we have this kind. So if any of you want me to send one home, just let me know and I will try to make sure um, I do that, but it's not necessary to have it. If you have one like this at home, these work great too. Um, so let me show you how to use this one first. First of all, um, I don't know if you can see, these have little holes in them, and this is where you put the pencil point, okay? And you can even get very mathematical and actually measure how big you want your circles to be by looking at um, the measurements on here. I'm not going to be that technical. You don't have to be that technical. Um, there's also a little spot inside here if you want to make smaller circles. So let me show you. The inside spot, you would hold this part down, and you would just put your pencil in one of the little holes there. Um, you can even use these tiny little holes inside here to use just as a stencil. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just make little tiny ones for right now. Okay, so you can see I'm making little tiny circles. Um, if you want to make your circles bigger, what you can do is you can hold this part down and choose one of these holes outside here and then just move this around, okay? And then there you go, you have your circle for that. Let me do that again. So, and by the way, when you're coming up with your designs, it could be random. They do not have to be the way I'm making it. It does not have to be in order. Um, you don't have to go from a small to big. You can do it however you want. As a matter of fact, even your circles can even go off the page a little bit. What I want you to do is just play around with the idea of making, like here, I'll make one go off the page. Making an orphism design with random circles. Okay, here's another one. I'll make one here. Okay. And you're just gonna keep doing this all around the paper. Again, if the circles go off the page, that's okay. Um, remember the little the little side, if you're gonna use the little tinier circles, you just need to hold down the orange part. Oh, this one's sticking a little, hold on, there we go. Some of these are new, so they might stick. If that happens, you might have to move it a little manually, that's okay. Um, you really need a good sharp pencil for this too. Okay, so that circle is a little wonky, but that's all right. Um, let's do a couple little ones in here. All right, so you get the idea. What I want you to do is fill up the whole paper with circles. They can overlap. You don't have to overlap them if you want them to just be um, make it look like one is underneath the other. That's fine also. All right, the next thing that you want to do, you can start with the lines or you can start with the circles. I started with circles because I wanted to show you how to use your compass. The other compass is this kind. It's like the old-fashioned kind. If you have one of these, you basically just use the pinpoint, and you can either do it this way or you can hold it down and move the paper. I know a lot of people do it that way too, where you just kind of hold it and move the paper around. 
I find that easier. Make sure your pencil sharp inside your that kind of compass also. All right, now once you have, you know, some circles, you don't have to fill the page up. You can fill the page up, whatever you want to do. Um, then I want you to get a ruler because you're going to need to, I made this one earlier, you're going to need to add lines to the orphism design too. So I'm just, I'm just giving you an example of all the different ways you can make these designs. I am going to ask you guys to do more than one. You're probably going to do at least three practices just to see how you want to organize your actual project and kind of play around with it and, and get used to the idea of just using these shapes and seeing that there's many, many, many different ways that you can organize a design like this. Um, so if you have big spots like this, you can leave that, but just realize that we are going to be using um, oil pastels and or colored pencils to fill in. So you're not going to want to leave too big of spaces like this because that's a lot to color in. So I am going to go ahead and break this space up a little bit more. You, don't have to, you do not have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can do it however you want to. I think this space is a little large too, so maybe I'll break that up a little. Okay, so that concludes our demonstration of how to start doing practices. You can make them look very different. You can make them have a lot of circles and smaller lines, a, a little bit of lines, or you can have more lines, more circles, but you need to have a combination. I'm going to ask you guys to do at least three of these practice ones um, between Wednesday and Thursday and possibly Friday. I'll even give you a little more time to practice then. And then the next step of this, I will do another demonstration of how to use the information to color. The information we had today about warm and cool colors, I will explain more about that in our next class. Okay, have a good day, guys.